Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. This time we're going to take a look at Battletech, one of my favorite strategy games and a good distraction from XCOM 2 whenever that is needed. In an effort to diversify the content on the channel, I decided to give another great game a chance and after some reflection, Battletech definitely ticked all of the boxes for an interesting playthrough. Battletech is a mercenary style type of strategy game with a rich background story, a lot of freedom of customizing your own troops and pretty open-ended, randomly generated gameplay, which allows for a variety of interesting goals that you can set for yourself. Since not everyone is familiar with the game itself, I decided to start this playthrough with something special. We're going to dedicate these episodes zero exclusively to a short introduction to the game mechanics so that we can safely assume that everybody knows the basics and we can be diving into the actual campaign. So if you know the game already, feel free to skip ahead uh, to the first real episode, which will be right after this video in the playlist. And if you don't know the game, let's continue with the introduction. So without further ado, let's jump into the explanation of the game itself. Battletech is set in a Battletech universe, uh, which is a franchise that started to my understanding in 1986 and is based on the Battletech era. The storyline in a nutshell summarizes as a pretty a large expansion of the humans amongst the galaxy, which inevitably led to a conflict for resources and mankind was turning on one another. The plot is set in the year between 3000 and 3050. So in this universe, no aliens exist. Humans basically are the biggest enemy of uh, their own kind and constant intrigues and struggles eventually lead to war between factions. It is not as grim as other universes like Warhammer 40k, uh, but the life in the Battletech universe is certainly plagued with conflict. During the expansion into the galaxy, warfare was a continuous stable part of the human interaction and the technological design culminated in uh, the most advanced warfare systems uh, which were called mechs, basically pretty highly mobile weapon platforms. Without going too deep into the development of each of the factions, it is suff uh, suffice to say that the scene uh, shows multiple great houses as well as clans that have divided the known galaxy amongst themselves and as part of an ever-shifting conflict the borders between these territories can yeah, shift from time to time. Said conflicts often lead to plenty of work for mercenaries and that's exactly where we come into the picture. Within Battletech we will take over the role of the commander of a mercenary faction which can be uh, deploying lances, so that's a set of four of those mechs, in order to perform tasks or credits. As a part of this wet work, we will eventually grow reputation and upgrade uh, grade our mech warriors, uh, which are the pilots of the mechs, as well as getting our hands on some additional technology for the mechs themselves. Talking about which, let's shortly go through the core options and actually take a look at the game. Fantastic, so I loaded a save game so that you can take a look at how the game would look like normally. So firstly, let's uh, take a look at what we can work with. We are starting with a pretty old ship, which you may use to travel through the galaxy in the Inner Sphere, and the game uh, offers quite a bit there. So let's take a look at the uh, map of the galaxy. The game within this galaxy offers around 200 different planets, each with their own traits such as density of population, uh, tech level, ecosystem, and so on. During the career mode, which we're going to play in the playthrough, your job is to essentially establish a uh, dominant mercenary organization, gain recognition, and travel throughout the many systems. Matter of fact, as many as possible. One specific aspect that I want to mention are flashpoints. You can see those here as kind of uh, small growing entity, uh, glowing uh, dots. The flashpoints offer a bunch of related quests that if you finish all of them, you will be granted a unique reward, such as a mech or some weapon that you could otherwise not receive. Secondly, moving on to another important part, the pilots of the game, which are the mech warriors. The mech warriors in this game are mercenaries of your organization, and they come um, in a simple system of four main skills. Gunnery, which determines the hit chance. Piloting, which determines uh, the chance. Uh, uh, gunnery, 
sorry, gunnery which determines the hit chance, piloting which determines the melee hit chance and the stability chance, guts which increases the pilot's health and the heat management, and tactics which determine the ability to hit with indirect shots such as rockets and reduce the minimum engagement range that some we uh, weapons have. Each of the skills uh, takes exponentially more uh, experience to raise from one level to another. You can see 900 here, 1600 here, and so on and so forth. And uh, it starts usually with uh, 2 to 3 and maxes out at 10. Additionally, special skills are available for each of uh, the pilots, offering a wide variety of options. Gunnery, for instance, offers multi-targeting and unresistible damage. Piloting, on the other hand, offers sure footing and the ability to shoot and then move, which normally does not work. Guts offers more defensive uh, play, uh, passively decreasing damage and active heat management. And finally, Tactic offers a sensor lock to detect enemies at range and the option to act fast in initiative order. While sort of these skills uh, might be a little bit different also from a power level, uh, for a good lance, you will at the end of the day need multiple skills in order to make that work. So one thing to note is the mech warriors uh, that you see here very much can die permanently. So every fight uh, is a unique engagement and pretty much a lot of fun since there's a pretty real risk of you losing one of your renowned pilots. Thirdly, let's move on to the centerpiece of the game, the mechs themselves. And I'm really browsing through this to speed it up. The game itself features 92 different mechs which can be slotted in four categories. Light mechs, which primarily used as recon units, uh, recon units, medium mechs, which are often used as fire support and ranged combatants, heavy mechs, which are frontline fighters, and finally the dreaded assault mechs, which are the heaviest of the weapon platforms. With the rise of uh, size, they also lose a bit of mobility, but they gain more tonnage. And tonnage describes an abstract measure of how many weapons you can install in a weapon platform, the more you have available, the better your mech will be equipped. Within the game, you will be able to have uh, up to three mech bases. As you can see here, it's a little bit later game save, uh, with plenty of standing mechs so that you can choose whatever loadout suits your needs. Looking at the weapons of each of uh, the mechs, or looking at one of them in uh, more particular, you will see that uh, a mech features so-called hard points, which are basically weapon slots. A mech can only carry as many weapons of a given type uh, as it has hard points. This one here, for instance, has three laser, three uh, rockets and one small hard point. The weapons are categorized in three different types. Laser weapons, which come with low weight, high heat production, no ammunition need. Missile weapons, which come with moderate weight, low heat, and lots of ammunition utilization, and ballistic weapons, high weight, low heat, and moderate ammunition requirements. The goal, plus, of course, uh, small hard points, which again can feature each of the three weapon categories. The goal of each mech design, therefore, is to use the available tonnage in a, a very accurate way to find kind of that sweet spot where you can manage its heat, its defenses and its offensive capabilities to optimize the build. As you can further see, the game has different hit zones available. The game features two arms, two legs, a right and a left torso, a center torso and a head. Additional hit zones uh, from the back are uh, left, um, right and center back. Positioning and angle for attacks therefore play a pretty important role in Battletech combat. Armor on each of the locations uh, differs and you can see that right here. And only once the armor is depleted, the actual structure underneath it will take damage. Taking damage on a structure. Uh, on the other hand, can destroy weapons and explode ammunition itself. If ammunition explodes, the entire section of the mech is destroyed. A couple of important extra rules. If uh, the left or right torso are being destroyed, the respective arm on the side is also destroyed. If one of the legs is destroyed, the mech will fall over for one round and everyone can take aim shots at the body parts of the fallen mech. 
If both legs are destroyed at any point, the mech is completely terminated and will exit combat. Similarly, if either the center torso or the head is destroyed, the mech will also exit combat, with the addition of the head destruction also leading to a kill of the mech pilot. Let's take a closer look of uh, how the game plays uh, in an actual mission, because I think that that is quite interesting. In order to go to missions, we do have a set of uh, contacts. So the game offers you these contacts, uh, which will influence the standing which e with each of the main factions in the Battletech universe. If you go on one of uh, them, you can negotiate either for straight up credits or for salvage rights, which allow you to keep leftover of defeated enemies. The latter usually is more valuable, but can be hit and miss regarding on what you are going to take. The actual combat for each uh, scenario mission objective, such as killing an enemy lance, capturing a fugitive mech warrior, destroying an enemy base or defending a friendly base can vary. The game offers the option, depending on that mission, to even fight alongside other friendly mechs or against multiple factions in a free-for-all, where anyone can attack you and all of the other factions at the same time. These settings are dynamically generated and offer a pretty wide variety of stuff that you can do, so the replayability is therefore quite high. Finally, let's take a look at the combat layout itself. So I will take one of uh, these nice uh, missions and we see each other in a second. Fantastic, there we are in the middle of uh, an engagement. Let's take a look at the layout itself. As you can see, the interface of the game is pretty densely designed. Each of the mechs uh, can move alongside a grid that you can see here. They have the option to simple move, uh, they can use their jump jets, or they can sprint, as indicated with move, sprint, and jump jets uh, down there. The distance of the movement determines how many motion blip a single unit receives. This here, for instance, would receive five motion blips. Afterwards, you can select the direction of how you want to face. Motion blips are an abstract concept of being more difficult to hit, and therefore they reduce the chance of you taking damage. Certain terrain will have additional effects. For instance, water allows for the cooling systems of the mech to work better, but it slows the mech down pretty substantially. Forest, on the other hand, will provide better defensive bonies. So you can see here, the green little dots are forest, and there is a forest icon right next to it. Once a fight breaks out, uh, the mechs will act in initiative order, and we're going to take a look at how that looks. So we started combat and you can now see that everybody acts in an initiative order ranging down from 5 to 1. Light mechs always start at 4, medium mechs at 3, heavy mechs at 2, assault mechs at 1. The earlier you can act, the uh, more alternative you will have and the more uh, chance to preemptively strike the enemy. Additionally, the game features certain special abilities that we're going to take a look. So. Before we go to those, let's take a look what I can do. We're currently in initiative phase number two. Uh, you can see two of the enemies have already acted. One enemy is still ready to go. And we're going to take a short look at this very scenario. Moving over here gives me good cover and a uh, motion blip. So we're going to do exactly that. No sweat. Additionally, we can now start to shoot. Each of the weapons that we have loaded has a certain hit chance and we can start firing at the enemy mech. You can see uh, we've hit it, and in this particular, this particular case, we have killed its left arm. We're taking some hits in return, but we're pr uh, looking pretty uh, fine. So what I was about to explain is there is a specific um, resource called Resolve. Depending on your crew's experience and the mood of the crew, the mech warriors will gain more inspiration, which leads to more resolve during the battle. This can be traded to one of two special abilities that I wanted to show. Number one, Precision Strike, which is an aimed shot that targets a specific area of an enemy mech and increases the hit chance, uh, but it, and it also reduces the initiative order of the enemy by one. So if you want them to go a little bit slower, that's a perfect ability. The second one would be Vigilance, which is the defensive ability that allows you to take 20% less damage. It grants a higher stability, you cannot be knocked down, and it increases your own initiative by one, 
meaning that you will be faster next round. Depending on the situation, either of these abilities can be pretty helpful. Finally, uh, we come to the mechs themselves. Each mech has a small indication. Uh, the overall bar uh, de describes its health, it's divided into armor and structure, so structure on the left hand side, armor on the right hand side, as well as their current stability, which is the lowest bar indicated uh, at the segmented bar, and the heat bar, which is the middle bar. If the heat bar fills, the mech shuts down and requires a round to reboot the system. If the stability bar fills, the mech loses its evasion blips and eventually is knocked over, in which case the pilot takes some damage and the initiative is temporarily reduced by one. Speaking about pilot damage, you can see each pilot has a certain amount of hit points, four to five in this case. If those hit points are reduced to zero, they are dead. This brief overview of uh, the game itself should give you all of the indications that you'd need to know in order to generally understand the basics of Battletech. Uh, more to come in the actual playthrough. So let's start our campaign and go right into the play playthrough. But before we do that, let's not forget, if you enjoy Battletech content or strategy games more generally, feel free to check out my channel where I'm covering a good mixture of guides, gameplays and strategy games. The uh, comments down in the videos as uh, well as a like would help the YouTube algorithm. You know that that promotes the content, so feel free to smash the button. I wish you a great uh, remaining evening and see you in two days in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye bye.